Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to the tutorial of the Superior Sleeper Cache. Uh, this tutorial will be just me running through it, and I will narrate what I'm doing, as well as pointing out various tidbits and um, things that you might want to know when you run it yourself. So, let's first go over our fit. It's a pretty simple Estero, we'll say. Um, we have a, we don't care really about the tops, they don't matter here, but let's look at our mids. We have an afterburner, this is to get around, uh, particularly we have the afterburner instead of a micro warp drive for the mine room and archive room. Uh, and then we have buffer, we have a medium shield extender, it's uh, faction, which just helps us out a little bit more. We have a shield hardener. And we have an integrated analyzer. A superior sleeper cache is uh, involving data and relic hacks, so having that integrated as well as the black glass implant helps us out. So we'll take a quick detour on our um, pod here. The only thing that is of major importance is that black glass. The rest of it is actually just for scanning, so that's the only thing that helps us in the actual site. In the lows, we have a damage control. We will be taking damage in this site, and this helps mitigate it so that we can um, live for longer. <laughs> uh, we do have reps inside the site, so we will be strategically using those and hoping that our buffer holds up uh, long enough to get those reps onto us. And then our remaining three low slots are a nanofiber for more agility and speed. This is just ease of use, convenience, uh, and also because um, parts of it, the archive room in particular, require us to act quickly, uh, we want to be able to move about the grid quickly. So we have the nanofiber and then two overdrive injectors. As for the rigs, we have a polycarbon engine. This is essentially a nanofiber. It gives us better velocity and inertia. And then we have two explosive shield reinforcers. This is actually for ghost sites. We use this ship for the covert ghost sites as well, but it just adds a little bit extra buffer for us as well, which can help out a little bit on this site. Um, as for our drones, they don't matter, but we do have warriors and uh, nuding drones. In our cargo hold, we also have a overclocker. Oh. We have a overclocker. Uh, just a dose one, and this just is a convenience item. You don't need to use it, but we're going to use it uh, just for ease of use and to help us get a little bit uh, better chances and at doing the archive room faster, more success rate. So let's go ahead and consume that, and I'll talk about those uh, rooms when we get to them. So the first thing you do is you get to the entrance area, and there's this hyperflux generator. It is a data hack, and you go ahead and hack it. I believe it's always a red hack, and if you fail it, you have one minute to successfully hack it after that, or else the site will despawn. So it says success, and it opens up this portal into the site. So we go ahead and okay. click on the portal active. and activate it to warp in. Once you are in the site, go ahead and put a bookmark uh, when you land. The site has a few different places that it can put you in. There are various rooms. So there are four rooms in the Superior Sleeper Cache. There is the turret room, or the sentries on duty, which we landed on here. There's the gas room, or boat room. There's the mine User room, and then there's the archive room. So once we get into this room, go ahead and make a bookmark, just in case anything goes awry. Uh, we can have that to get back to our wreck. <laughs> so what we do in this room is we can see there's this remote defense grid near the warp in and there's also this sentry repair station and in the distance you can see one two three four five six turrets and a bunch of cans and goodies inside their perimeter. So the way we handle this room is we first hack this remote defense grid unit that will turn this turret blue and then once that is a blue turret we rush over to the repair station and hack that in order to get repair reps on our drone 
After we've done both of those things successfully, we just wait for this turret to kill all of the other turrets. It's very important to not go inside the field too soon, even if you can tank it in a battleship. Uh, about 30 seconds after you breach the perimeter, a load of sentry drones will come about 300 kilometers off of you and just start annihilating you. <laughs> um, it can kill battleship sized ships and is highly advised to not trigger. Uh, something that can also trigger those drones to come out is if you fail this first can once. So if you fail this first can once, this room is pretty much over for you. Just warp out. It's the safest thing to do. Sometimes it can be finicky and not mess up the site for you, but you just want to play it safe here and just warp out and just give up the room. There will be other sleeper caches in the future. Another interesting thing to note is that even if you fail or don't do the repair station, the other drones will just slowly die over time. It's kind of like a bug or something weird about the site. Um, I I don't personally recommend it because I can just hack the repair station consistently, but if you are unable to quickly um, hack that and your friendly turret does die, just go ahead and warp out of the room and eventually everything should be clear. So, What we actually do, instead of doing all of this room at once, we do this first part. We hack the remote defense grid and then the repair station, and then we will actually take this rift and start to doing the first room. Uh, the reason it's called the first room, with quotes, is because generally you land there first, uh, and it is the gas room. So let's go ahead and take care of this room. Or at least the first part of this room. We'll explain the next part of this room once we return. Alright, so now you can see that that turret turned blue. We're going to go ahead and move over to the repair station with our afterburner on. That's quite a hack. Having a little difficulty here. Should be right in this bottom right corner. There we go. So now, if we target our re rewired a sentry gun, you can see it was taking damage, but now it is getting those repairs. And it's also killing those other turrets. So now we just let it do it, let it drive, do its thing, and we take this strange rift back to the first or gas room, the solar power plant as it was. So here we can look at the room. We see three strange rifts, two close and one very far away. We also see a boat. I just think it looks like a boat, the Sol Ray observation unit, uh, and then we have a free chest over here, and a gas cloud with a bunch of chest inside of it. So right now, this gas cloud does a lot of damage, so you do not want to enter it with any ship, but what we're going to do is solve the puzzle, as it were, to make the gas cloud do less damage so that it is tankable. The way we do that is pretty simple. We just go ahead and first hack this boat, and then on a successful hack here, we will get a key card or a key chip. Um, and if you fail this hack, I don't believe anything ever bad happens. It's a pretty low stress um, can to hack. We're getting some pretty tough boards here today, huh? There's the core, though. 
We go ahead and open it up and we got a radio ray module. It's important to uh, notate the name of this modulate and this one says radio. That's our keyword. So if you look on your either overview or just in the world itself, you can see these other cans called the soul ray cans. One's a gamma, one's an infrared, and one's a radio. So we got the radio one, so we need to put this chip in this box way over there. And the way we get there is just to take this strange rift. So this strange rift over here will take you back to the turret room. This one will take you to the far side of the room. And this one on the far side will take you back here. That is until we um, mess with it. We go ahead and take that rift over here. And then we can put the modulate into the radio box. And then in local, let's go ahead and bring that up. So it says, using the crystal disk, the alignment is now correct and the solar ray power terminal is stable. So since we are on this far side and you notice that there's this remote reroute unit, this is a can that we will hack. And what it does is change this rift over here to instead of coming back over here, it will take us to another room called the mine room. And that is a room we will do uh, in just a moment after we finish this one. Uh, so let's go ahead and hack this. Again, if you fail this hack, I'm pretty confident nothing happens. So it's a pretty low stress one. And now you can say in local, it says you have rerouted the destination beacon for the nearby rift. Drive so it makes this one go slightly off kilter over here. Normally it goes back to over this other rift, but that's okay. It brings us to this side of the room, and that's the important bit. Now that we're on this side of the room, we're going to go ahead and take this freebie dented storage can. And as you can see on the probe scanner, right now the site is still up. But as soon as you successfully hack a loot can, and this is a relic hack, uh, the site will go away from the probe scanner. So it's very important that you have this bookmarked, or else you will not get to come back to it. And later on we will be warping off of the site and coming back. So you need to have it bookmarked. And the first can is a whopping 15 million. That's good to see. And then we'll just wait a little bit and see that it does in fact go off of the probe scanner. There it goes. So now the only way people can get to you is if they combat scan you. And now that the gas cloud is doing less damage, we're gonna go ahead and go right into it and we are going to speed hack these six cans before we take too much damage. And you can also generally use a micro warp drive. A lot of times I will use a micro warp drive uh, in my standard fit, so for this site, uh, but the afterburner is a little more helpful in the final archive room, which is by far the most scary and dangerous place to be. Uh oh. There we go. User joined your channel. Let's go ahead and leave TeamSpeak. Channel switched.
jumping G Willikers. There's that can. Not much. We're down to half our shield. That can had a nice eight million in it. Always good to see that. And if you fail these cans, nothing happens. You just hack them again. Easy peasy. You can also get a large majority of the polarized blueprints here. It's uh, mainly where they drop. Maybe only where they drop. Uh, you can also get storyline BPCs. Some of them worth uh, even up to 700 million. So a very lucrative site. Didn't mean to hit that, but okay. And I think we might uh, be stable here. So your shield is strongest at about 30%. And so we might be stabilizing here with our um, shield hardener on as well. My oh my. Okay. Oh, looks like we're going down a little bit. What a whopping can. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, everyone in between, this is why we run these things. A 160 million isk can right there. So, we are going to take a quick break into the Fort Design. We're in friendly space, so we might as might as well use it. Uh, this will allow us to easily regen our shield, and we will also take a dump of our loot just to make sure it's safe. The next area that we're going into is called the Mine Room, and it is a very dangerous and finicky area. And uh, so much so that we're actually going to do the turret accepted. room first. Uh, because if I do lose this ship, which is a possibility... Um, I want to be able to get as much loot as I can before I explode. So, when you leave the site, you have two minutes to get back onto the site before it despawns. Drive. So, okay. do whatever you want with those two minutes, but just make sure that you don't wait longer than two minutes, otherwise, poof, it's gone. Uh, same thing goes for cloaking. You can be cloaked in the site, but only for two minutes. If you're cloaked <laughs> for longer, just things in front of your eyes will vanish. We get here, we take Bolt the drive. rift, Active. and this is going to bring us back to the first room we entered, which in this case is the turret room. So now you see all of the turrets are gone, and so we are going to go ahead and take a bunch of loot here. Something to be aware of is these three egg plasma chambers are bombs. If you get too close to them with a large enough SIG radius, so for instance if you're micro warp driving, uh, it will explode and it will kill things even up to battleship size. So it is not something to muck around with. Just turn your microwave drive off and slow boat to the cans. The cans aren't that far away anyhow, and it's going to be in your best interest.
first can a nice cool 10 million the next can let's see what's behind its door now we're starting to get some easier boards 5 mil but that's still quite nice these sites can go value anywhere between 100 to probably 300 in like pure blue loot uh, value and then uh, large amounts of the very variable value comes from the blueprint copies that you will also be getting. And the blueprints can be valued at anywhere between negative ISK and um, I think 700 might be the largest one that you can get. Which is the uh, Thunker cap battery. Just a few more cans to go in the turret room. Here's hoping we get another big can. 150 mil, another one would be nice. And it's very possible, which is even the best part. Looks like we hacked the can a little bit out of order. But that's okay. And the same thing as the other loot cans. If you fail the hack, nothing bad happens. Uh, it, they don't even explode if you fail them more than twice. You can just go as many times as you need on these bad boys. nothing great out of this last room we have one more can it is a pristine so the highest likelihood of good stuff let's see what we can manage to get <laughs> barely any isk at all okay so we are going to just do another little dump at the Fortizar and again that's just because the next two rooms that we're going to do are excruciatingly um, finicky and deadly <laughs> so we're going to do the mine room first and what that is is the so you warp into a room it has a can in it let's just put these here and we have two minutes again so your timer restarts to two minutes every time you warp out um, so it it's not like cumulative timeout. It's it's every time you warp out, you got two minutes. Um, but the mine room, you warp into it. There's a single can there. You go up to it, and you hack it. If you fail this hack, you die. Your battleship dies. Your ship just explodes. There's nothing. There's no collect two hundred dollars. Go straight to jail. <laughs> um, Active. If you succeed in the hack, and I believe it is always a red can, a red hack, um, if you succeed in the hack, it will reveal a number of mines and treasures in a radius around that can. It doesn't reveal all of the mines. It doesn't reveal all of the treasures. I'm not sure what dictates what it gets revealed or not, uh, but hopefully it reveals a lot of treasures and a lot of mines. Also these strange rifts are pretty finicky so don't click on the strange rift to approach it just click past it and you will get closer to it and then once you're close enough you can hit that warp button. Active.
So since we uh, rerouted this one, this uh, warp thing, it brought us over here. We're going to go ahead and approach this beacon. And then that made this remote defense grid spawn. We're going to go up to it. And this is the extremely scary can. So let's just make sure that we do not fail it. We're going to use our rule of sixes and rule of eight. Looks like we got a rule of six there. And a successful hack. So now you see that it revealed some stuff. And it looks like it revealed one intact storage depot. I think it can reveal like up to four. User joined your channel. Let's go ahead and start slow boating our way to this can. In doing so, we may run into an invisible mine, which will do a little bit of damage to us. One mine, not that big of a deal. The problem is that it can chain react other mines. And if it does, and it's just kind of like a chance, and if it does that, you can die. And there's like not much you can do about it. I generally, oh, okay, all right. So there, you saw we just exploded a mine. We are, we are well within the radius of things that got revealed. But for some reason, it didn't reveal that one, and we exploded. Luckily, it only chained React two things drive instead of the entire room. So we didn't totally explode there. And what we're going to do, just for safety, just to make sure I can show you guys this whole video, um, is we're going to dock up again. We're going to repair. I know it's a little tedious to keep going back and forth. Docking but request accepted. Maybe I'll speed through this part. And if it's just shield damage, you don't need to uh, repair. You just need to dock up and it will repair your shields. Warp drive active. So let's try that again. And let's check out our logs and messages. Looks like we did two, two mines hit us. One was close, one was far away. I'm pretty sure I didn't see two mines there. <laughs> so, that's how it goes. I would generally Warp not suggest active. doing the mine room. I don't think it's worth it. Typically you'll get one or two cans, and the risk involved in it is too great for the payout. Warp drive active. Okay. Warp drive active. And sometimes even warping to this room, you'll take some mine damage. Let's try and uh, approach it again. sun glare isn't helping either. If you do get close enough to either a mine or a, another can, they will uh, pop up. So if you want to like just feel yourself around this area, um, in case you're like a mad lad, you can do that. Uh, but again, not advisable. And we got five million for our troubles. And then the way to get out of this uh, mine warp room drive. is okay. you warp off the site and you warp back in. There's a lot of warping off and on. Uh, I would say 
most people will standardly do the first room, so the gas room and the turret room, and then not really worry about the archive or mine room. Uh, me personally, I do the gas room and the turret room. I am working on consistently doing the archive room, uh, and you will see me try my best to get as far as I can in it. We will probably warp out. We almost definitely will warp out at some point and not fully complete it, but we will get to far enough in that you will get the idea of what it is. And in a uh, frigate, you it is possible to fully Warp complete. I would not expect to fully complete it. So, now that we're done with the three rooms, we're going to the last room, the archive room. In order to get to the archive room, you go to the turret room, which is here. You go to this hyperflux generator in the middle, and you give it a good old hack. On a successful hack, a portal will appear, which will bring you to the room. On an unsuccessful hack, um, something will go wrong. You'll see it in local, and you will have the opportunity to um, make it appear again. It's risky, though. The way you do that is you go to this vessel rejuvenation battery and you just about finished hacking it, and then you shoot these cans to explode them. Or rather, you, you finish the hack here, which gives you like 10 seconds of rep, if that, very little rep time, uh, and then you shoot these cans, and it explodes everything, and that creates a rift. Uh, so the best plan of attack is just to succeed on this hack, so you don't have to risk uh, those dangerous things. Looks like we got an easy hack there, and you can see it makes a nice, strange rift. Warp drive active. So probably the first thing you want to do when you come into the archive room is make a bookmark. You are very likely to die in this room, especially when you are learning it. And so you don't want to forget to make a bookmark when you lose your ship which will be in a stressful situation, so just make a bookmark at the start. So, this is the archive room. This is the big, bad, mean space room. I'm going to keep my local up because you will see messages appear in it. Uh, so, what we do here is... Uh, uh, whole kit and caboodle shenanigans and I'll try and explain it as best as I can right now and then I will just kind of do it uh, because it requires a lot of concentration and then maybe I'll talk about it afterwards also this room is extremely finicky so sometimes things happen that aren't supposed to happen and you just have to like work around it or just warp off the site and just call it good you got enough loot already we're probably up to 200 million loot um, so we're doing pretty good here. So as you can see, there is a defense targeting augmentation unit. This is the first thing you hack. It makes the turrets that will come later less able to target you. They can still target you pretty well, uh, but it makes them less dangerous. You also see these three eggs. These eggs are not bombs. They are instead lootable containers. You hack them with, I believe, a data analyzer and inside you will get some blue goo. You need to take three blue goo, which generally there's about four in, in between these three containers, but you need to take three of them and stick it in the central archive cerebellum. Once you do that, the room starts. You have, uh, let's look at our wiki, to find out the timings, uh, and I'm using the Eve University wiki for the superior sleeper site which has some pretty good information on it so once you start the cerebellum there is five seconds and then it ejects the first storage depot which is always going to be in the same area it's always going to be over here then in 14 seconds 
a rejuvenation battery is ejected, which is a way to rep your ship. 45 seconds, a forced ejection attempted, and massive shock waves may begin. And maybe a sentry gun is also ejected. Maybe. <laughs> Not always. Uh, and then at 2 minutes 20 seconds, a second rejuvenation battery. 4 minutes 40 seconds, a third one. And then 6 minutes 31 seconds, colossal shock waves convince. So, what happens is once you start it, you have about a minute and a half to hack. What we do is two cans, and then we hack the vessel rejuvenation battery. Once we hack that battery, we get insane reps for 90 seconds. These, these reps are absolutely massive. Uh, they should be able to take care of you regardless of the damage that is coming through. That said, the damage that the shockwaves do is also massive. We're talking 15,000 damage over 9 seconds. Or 4,000 damage over 5 seconds, depending on the wave. So you need to have those reps up in order to survive as a frigate. Um, if you are doing this in a cruiser like a T3C or perhaps a battleship, um, you can tank them a little bit, but you still need to have very large reps. So the um, kind of flow through that we're going to do is we're going to hack two cans and then we're going to hack the vessel rejuvenation battery. And then we're going to hack um, one can while we live in that ve vessel rejuvenation battery. And then we're going to attempt to do the same thing in some other cans that spawn. Hack two cans, maybe one can. Um, it depends on how the hacking is going. Uh, and then you hack another vessel rejuvenation battery. And then you take another shockwave and you just kind of rinse and repeat. You hack cans until the shockwave's about to come and you, you kind of need to preempt it as well. So you kind of have to get a good feeling of the timing, um, which just kind of comes with practice. So, with all that said, take a drink, and let's see if we can not explode. Oh, and on a failure of a hack, turrets will come out. That said, sometimes on a successful hack, turrets will still come out. And we like to orbit things at 500 for uh, to mitigate those issues. Another thing that I failed to mention is that you see the gas clouds around those big drone things. The gas clouds will also deal damage to you. So there we got two blue goos. So that's enough for us. So we're going to open this cargo container. We're going to put the blue goose inside. We delock everything that we have and start approaching where we know that the first container will come. So there it is. Possible to overshoot this can and start taking damage is a scary situation when it happens. Looks like we didn't though this time. Again we hack two. We got a mid spawn board which is not a good board for hacking. But lots of rules of sixes there. Okay. So we hacked that, and then we hack the Vessel Rejuvenation Battery. And soon you'll see in local, it'll say 15 seconds until shockwaves come. Uh-oh. We're getting close on time here. Okay. So we hack that. We get our big blue repi field, and we hack this can. A 
is the 15 second warning. Making great time so far. We sit here, we unlock these things while we take massive shockwave damage. And then we start heading up here. We're gonna lock two of these cans. Rule of six, victory. We're going to go ahead and hack the next rejuvenation battery. We have 15 seconds. We need to find it extremely quickly. We didn't find it quickly enough. So we're just going to oh, leave. Right. We're just going to okay. leave. Okay. That's it. You, you either, you see this message in local. You determine if you can successfully hack your vessel rejuvenation battery in enough time. And if you can't, you just say, thanks site. You've given me all that you're worth. And I'm just gonna leave. Uh, if we would have stayed any longer, there's a very good chance that we would not have successfully finished that hack in the time that the giant uh, massive shockwave came and would have destroyed us. But, so in a frigate, you just try and get as many as you can. Looks like we ended up with 26 million extra in loot for that room. We also got a few BPCs. I don't think this one sells for very much. Uh, it's okay. That's about 10 mil. Uh, the polarized torpedo blueprint is a very good one, and you can get runs of one, three, and 10. Looks like we only got a one copy run here, but that's still gonna be an extra, say 18, 16 mil. And I don't think this one's very good, but we did get 10 runs of it, so. Mm, seven mil. So, it, it can definitely be worth it. You can also totally find those big 150 million cans there. Again, it's very risky, um, but it, it's something that if you were looking for a little bit extra to tack on to the sites, um, or if you're just trying to like prove your, your glory as an explorer, it's something to keep working on. Um, so yeah, that's the Superior Sleeper Cache in basically its entirety. Um, the rest of the archive room is just, it just rinse and repeat. Eventually the damage will get even larger. Um, once you get to the, I think it's the six minute mark, a frigate can no longer tank it even with the reps. So you need to have, um, successfully hacked. I believe it's all 10 cans. I think 10 cans spawn there in that archive room. Uh, yeah. So if you have any questions feel free to um, definitely ask them in the comments down below for sure. Uh, you can also check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash nth dimensional and a link will be in the description. Um, and yeah, <laughs> we're going to be making more of these tutorials for the standard and uh, limited sleeper caches as well as other things like wormhole site, wormhole combat sites, basically anything involving exploration and I uh, would love it if you guys s smash that like button, hit that subscribe, ring that bell, do all the doobly do, and who's and what's and my calls it. Yeah, that would be a big help. And uh, of course, you know, like, comment, subscribe for sure, and check out the Twitch. Thanks so much. Bye.